It is the day after Christmas, so let's go thrifting! Won't nobody love you the way they should Won't nobody check up on you, make sure you're good Won't nobody check those body channels for you my mom and I sourced at three different places today and we started off at this local consignment store. If you've watched my videos, you've heard me talk about a consignment store that let me shop in their storage unit. This is that one and they have a ton of great stuff and today they were doing 60% off of all of their red slashed items, which was only two racks of clothes, but I did find a few things including this cabbie cardigan. They had two of the same cardigan for sale basically right next to each other and in the same size, but one was a few dollars more expensive than the other, so clearly I went with the cheaper one. This is a button-up shirt from Logo by Lori Goldstein. I thought it was actually pretty cute, however, it was a little too expensive. It was a size extra small, which I felt like was gonna make it a little bit harder to move. Lauren Ralph Lauren is one of my very favorite brands to resell, but their bold Southwestern print pieces do better. That one was just a little bit too plain for my comfort and for that price. The next piece that piqued my interest was this plaid pullover. It was in like the satiny material. The brand was Devon Bear. I had never heard of it, but it looked like a really great piece and, you know, very good quality. So I did take the time to look up comps in the store. And while comps were pretty decent, what I realized after looking at the price was that there wasn't really enough meat left on the bone for me to turn a good profit. So I did end up leaving it behind. The next worthwhile piece that I came across was by the brand St. John. I love reselling St. John and the tag definitely made me think that this was a newer piece. It was a very sleek turtleneck so I did hold on to it and put it in my cart. This next item is another St. John piece but this was priced way too high especially for such a simple piece so I left it behind. This was a brand called Part 2. I had never heard of it, but I thought the piece was pretty beautiful, so I did look up comps. They were whatever, and there just were not very many pieces by this brand, so unfortunately this one got left behind as well. Moving on to our second location, I recently have gotten super into antique stores and just looking for really great vintage home decor. This is actually a booth inside, not, I, you know, it's not called an antique store. It's actually called a consignment store, but it's mainly home goods. However, this specific vendor has a lot of vintage clothing as well. But now I'm going to show you a few of the other booths, a few of the other spaces, and the kinds of things that caught my eye. I've been super into brass lately, and even though I've never ever had candlesticks in a candle holder in my life, I just, you know, have been so drawn to them lately. Um, I to be honest, do get a little overwhelmed when I look at these kinds of spaces because there is usually so much stuff crammed into them and I don't know a ton about the majority of what is before me. And that is really overwhelming. However, I have been having so much fun learning about home decor and just what kinds of things to be on the lookout for. This is like a tool leather wallet, but as you can see, it's pretty beat up. Um, and so even though it was pretty inexpensive, I went ahead and left it behind. So many beautiful brass pieces, but I had already kind of looked at a lot of them before I started filming, and a lot of them were really out of my price range and not um, good for reselling especially. I'm just kind of looking around at some of the booths, and in a second you're going to see my mom. Hi, mom! <laughs> I thought both of these pictures were beautiful, but the geometric shape of this second one really called out to me. I especially like the floral textured print on the exterior as well, and I thought the price was pretty fair. However, I just don't really need a picture like this in my life. I feel like I'd be so scared to use it because I'd be scared that the kids would break it or something like that. This booth I love. I have bought a few pieces from them before. This brass owl trinket bowl. I thought was so fun and honestly priced decently like I don't need anything like that and I would have loved to purchase it for resale but I could not make a very big profit you know with that $15 price how cool are these brass etched elephant claw bells however when would I ever use these in my life too 
The price on them was fair, they sounded great, but I had no use for them, so I had to leave them behind. My mom and I decided to end our time thrifting together at a local Goodwill before we went to my sister-in-law's house, and there were some pretty great pieces waiting for us on the other side of that door. This is the first shoe rack that you see when you walk into Goodwill and usually they put some really great pieces there that they have overpriced outrageously. This is a pair of Reeker boots and I thought the colors on these boots were just so amazing and surprisingly they were not priced that high so I went ahead and got them. However, they went back to their roots with their pricing on this pair of Uggs. They priced these at $24.99 but you can see the fur on the inside is all matted down. The next things that caught my eye were some hiking sandals, including these ones by the brand Keen. If you've watched my channel before, you know I love picking up these Keen hiking sandals. They always resell really well for me. However, I already have a few pairs of these waiting to be listed at home, so I did the responsible thing and I left them behind, especially because they were asking $12.99. I do try to pay under $8 for these just because sometimes they do only sell for $25, $35. A lot of times I can get 40 to 50 for them. It just really depends. Y'all also know that I love selling Talbots however they wanted. $6.99 for the dress, which is pretty normal at my Goodwill. However, there was a lot of pilling on the dress. So even though it was a bigger size and even though it was pretty, I left it behind. However, these Finn Comfort German Mary Jane shoes. They definitely went in the cart because this is a great brand. I have sold it before for really good money and they had it priced so well. So into the cart they went. I found another pair of Reeker shoes. So obviously someone donated their Reeker shoe collection and I'm very happy that they did, despite the fact that they're all still in really great shape. This is another brand that I love reselling. It's Vionic. However, these, while priced decently, had some huge scuffs as you can see and I just wasn't gonna be able to bring them back to life. Another pair of Reeker shoes. I'm telling you, someone donated their collection and these were half off because they were the color of the week, which was green. So I got them for $4, four pairs of shoes in this car and three of them are by the brand Reeker. After looking at the shoes, which is usually the first section of the thrift store that I go to, I moseyed on over to the men's section just because I have had incredible luck selling men's clothes lately. And this appeared to be a vintage, I wanna say, Polo Ralph Lauren piece. It was also new with tags. It had a tag from an old department store that I've never heard of. And then as you can see, this sweater really caught my eye. I just skipped over a whole section of clothes. It's by the brand Campus and it's this great neutral color with like speckles of other colors within it. However, when I looked it over thoroughly, once I turned off my camera, there were some holes on the back. So I did end up leaving that behind. Speaking of flawed items, I saw this pair of Doc Martens from across the way in the men's shoe department. I knew that these were Doc Martens. However, the closer I got, I realized that they were pretty beat up. However, they are steel toe work shoes. So I went ahead and put them in my cart because messed up or not on the exterior, it doesn't really matter as long as the shoe itself is in good working order. And then my God, this sweater stopped me in my tracks. Look at that man playing the bagpipes. I've never heard of this brand. Let me know down in the comments if you've heard of Woolsey. Never heard of it before in my life, but I knew that this needed to come home with me. And then I just thought it was funny that Noodles and Company made vests for their employees. That's pretty cool. Oh, and then on an end cap in the home section, I found this beautiful marble lamp. Like, oh my God, this thing weighed a ton because it was just a block of marble with like this brass ring and um, a brass bottom. So beautiful. This jacket was by the brand Corey Halperin, and I have heard of this brand. I looked up comps while I was in the Goodwill, and comps for jackets by this brand were great, but 
look at all of the wear on the hems of this jacket. I think it accidentally got put in a washing machine and it is not supposed to look like that. So I left it behind, even though it's such a cool piece. Hi everyone, my name is Becky Park. Thank you so much for thrifting with me. And now what I'm gonna do is show you everything that I got at, let's see, I went to a consignment store. I went to kind of like an antique type store and a local Goodwill. So let me know down in the comments which one you think was the best place that I went to as far as sourcing goes. I think it was pretty clear given, you know, where I picked up the most stuff. But I'm gonna show you everything that I picked up, let you know how much I paid for those items and how much I think I can sell each item for. If you enjoyed that, that thrift with me portion please make sure that you hit that like button and subscribe if you enjoy these kinds of videos also i'm a little insecure about thrift with me videos i don't know why it is i just have never really felt my thrift with me videos and so i'm trying something kind of new with the style that i put out for you today let me know what you thought of it and if you'd like to see more thrift with me videos like that in the future but without further ado let's start with just a handful of things that i got at the consignment store we'll start off with just like a little piece that i didn't even show i don't think because it's for my daughter it's just a little crop nike t-shirt i really like the gold typography and then i really like the pattern that's in the swoosh i thought that was really cute so this is just for her it was 5.99 and i was happy to pay it because that's pretty good for a nike t-shirt for my daughter um this is actually my mom she got a pair of talbot's pants it is her favorite store this I showed in the video, I believe, and even though the tag is coming off, um, I don't think that it's a problem, except for the fact that like, oh, okay, here we go. So this is a St. John piece, and you can see right there, it says St. John. Sorry, the lighting is also kind of weird. It's at night. My little light ring like thing is being weird um, but it's in a size petite this is let's see they had it priced at 35.99 i have an itemized receipt somewhere everything was 60 percent off so i still paid a decent amount for it but i paid that much because let's see it's 60 85 percent polyamide 15 percent spandex but i paid that much because if it's not really worth that much I 100% do not mind keeping this. I love these kinds of like super slinky turtlenecks. I think they're so wonderful, but I do feel like I should be able to list it for at least $50, if not more. Um, so we'll see. So what did I pay? I paid about $14 for this. That's not bad. It's obviously not like a super significant St. John piece, but I do think it's a more modern piece. And again, I don't mind wearing it. And then the only other piece I got to resell from that consignment store, their sale just wasn't that great today. Even though things were 60% off, they priced things pretty high to begin with. So it's not like things were priced well enough where I could still make a pretty good profit from reselling, especially because they don't have a lot of higher end brands or anything like that. But this is the second piece that I got. This is by Cabby, and you guys saw how there were two of the same cardigan, so I got the cheaper one. This is priced at $14.99. The last time I picked up a Cabby piece, it sold so fast. It sold as a result of the haul video. Like, I literally hauled the sweater. Someone reached out to me as soon as they watched it. Actually, like, seven or eight people reached out to me after they watched it, so I was like, okay. That means if I come across any more cute cabby stuff, I need to be picking it up, especially their sweaters I feel like do pretty well. And I thought this was a really fun print. It's obviously like, okay, I say obviously, but now I'm not sure. I thought it was more of like an animal print, but I also feel like it could be flowers. Let me know down in the comments below what you think that is. Um, I'm sure you know this already too, but the nice thing about cabby is if you look at their care tag on the inside, at the bottom, they will have a style number. Um, so I'm not sure if you're able to see it here, but the style number is 5277. If you punch that into Google with the word cabbie before it, it'll pop up exactly what this sweater is called. It'll pop up stock photos. And that makes listing the sweater so, so, so easy. Now that also does mean that a ton of other people who have the same sweater listed are gonna have that same exact stock photo. So I am actually pretty proud of the way that my turn out so a lot of times I will purposefully not use a cabbie stock photo just so that my item stands out compared to all of the other listings that use stock photos as their cover picture but we'll see we'll see how it turns out in the pictures but I thought this was a really cool piece I'm hoping I can sell it for at least 35 and I had what is it like six dollars into it a little bit more than maybe i would have spent it like a goodwill but i think it's still okay so moving on to what i got at that little antique type store 
nothing. I got nothing to resell, but I do really love that place. It's just that I feel like the majority of this stuff wasn't really priced for resell, and I picked up a few items for myself the last time that I went. I'll actually show you a little clip here of some items that I got for my own home and hopefully for the home that we're going to move into. But speaking of items for the home, I did pick up one home item at Goodwill. I'm pretty excited about it. Let me show you. So this is, I believe, oh God, it's so heavy. Um, like a marble base. This is a lamp, obviously. Sorry, I should have started with that. I love lamp. This is a marble lamp and I hate this. I hate the lamp shade itself, but the base, it is literally so heavy is this solid chunk of marble. Look at that. Oh my gosh. And this is like all brass on the bottom and here too. And this is definitely an older piece. You can tell by the plug. This shade is atrocious. So I'm gonna swap that out for something that I like a little bit more. And you know, it's pretty simple to swap out um, a lampshade. So I'm just gonna, you know, kind of look through Facebook Marketplace, even Goodwill, and see what other types of lampshades they have that would look good on this. Um, but I just thought this base was so amazing. It's so heavy, but I love the shape of it as well as the marble. I feel like this is something that definitely would cost a lot more if I had found it at an antique store. Um, but Oh, I was very, very excited about that. My Goodwill and my local thrift store like home sections are so sad. Like they are the absolute worst. So the fact that they had something like this today and the fact that it was only $12.99, I was so happy. So that was a really cool piece. I'm very excited to use it in my home, like I said. And uh, for when we move, if we move, I know exactly the room that I want it to be in, um, but I definitely think I can find a use for it in our current home now too. All right, let's get into some of the other pieces that I got at Goodwill, but first I have a little announcement. <laughs> One thing I really wanted to do in 2023 was to figure out a way where I could curate a collection of pieces that I was passionate about. If you know my reselling style at all, if you've been watching my YouTube channel, you know that I will sell anything and everything, anything that can you know make me a buck. I don't really care if I like the piece, I don't care if it's my aesthetic or not, I will just pick up anything that I know will make me some money because that's the reason I'm reselling is to make more money. However, I have also always envied resellers who can afford to be really picky about what it is that they resell. You know, they'll come across an amazing piece and they'll be like, this is great quality, this will sell for a ton, I'm not gonna pick it up though because it doesn't fit my store or my website or my what have you. And that has always been so intriguing to me that people can afford to do that. But a lot of the times it's because of where they live and what kind of access they have to inventory. I personally know that I can't really afford to be that picky given where I live and given the kind of inventory that I have. So when I find things, even if I'm not super passionate about it, I don't care, I'll still pick it up, I'll still list it. And a lot of you have shared with me in the comments that that's how you operate to. You like to just learn about what is going to make you money versus honing in only on the items that spark joy within your hearts. However, I just kept coming back to this idea of it would be really cool if there was a space where I could do just that, where I could share with all of you what it is that I am passionate about, what pieces are bringing me joy, and I have figured out how I'm going to do that. So in the year 2023, I'm going to start off by saying that I'm doing month drops every month on a Friday and I don't know which one yet maybe like the second Friday of the month or something like that I will have a drop on my website and it will only be pieces that I'm just so super excited about. They're just cool. They're kind of my aesthetic, my vibe. And then whatever doesn't sell from the drop, you know, once the weekend is over, I'll just go ahead and list to my regular platforms too. But what I wanted to do is give all of you an opportunity to shop those pieces first at really great prices, like better prices than what I would price them at on my other platforms. So definitely make sure that you are subscribed because I will definitely announce here on YouTube when that first drop will be. And I'll also share with you what pieces that 
that I'm showing you from today's haul will be in that drop. So far, everything that I've showed you, none of those pieces will be because clearly I'm not like super passionate about any of them. And I don't think there's anything in this particular bag that I'm super passionate about either. I do think a lot of the things in this bag will actually sell pretty well, but they're not my vibe. They're not, you know, what I just described to you. So I actually think that this person donated their entire Reeker, Riker, I still don't know how to say the name of this brand, but um, they donated a ton of shoes by this brand. Why is my lighting so horrible? Well, there you can kind of see it. Um, I have sold this brand's shoes a handful of times and they always do really well. I just sold a pair of boots by them for like $65, I want to say, and they weren't even listed for that long. Um, these are pretty cool sneakers. They have these little laser cutouts on the side. They're super lightweight. They've got this zipper detail. Um, I'm not sure if this is real leather. I would be shocked if it wasn't because typically this brand only, you know, uses really great materials. I'm like 99% sure, but I'm not seeing anything where it gives me the fabric content. Um, but yeah, I thought these were really fun. I do think I should be able to list these for at least like 40 ish dollars, if not more. And they only wanted $4.99 for them. Yes, please. I feel like sometimes my Goodwill prices things so ridiculously, but this I thought was really fair. Let me put this right here. Um, the next pair of Riker, Riker, you know, people have explained to me how to pronounce this brand many times before, and I just keep forgetting. This is definitely probably a little bit older of a pair of this shoe. Um, and this one was $7.99, except green was half off. So I got these for $4. So these, um, are a little bit more old fashioned, I would say. They're just a nice slip on shoe. They seem super comfortable. Again, they are so, so, so lightweight. These are actually made in Morocco, whereas the first pair that I showed you were made Made in Vietnam and again it doesn't say like a material content anywhere but I almost can guarantee you oh no it's in like German over material und dexo echt leather I don't and I don't really know how to speak German I'm just pretending that I do but um I'm pretty sure those are leather so these I can probably price around 40 50 dollars as well um this is not that same brand but kind of similar in style at first i thought they were doc martens they are not they're by the brand finn comfort um i don't know if you can see it right there but then also on the bottom it says finn comfort these are in a european size 38 and these are just you know very comfortable shoes they're just known for being super comfortable now these have some dr shoals inserts in them i will go ahead and pop those out but yes these are made in germany Okay, the insoles are a little rough, as you can see. So these, oh man, the lighting situation. Okay, let me see if I can, can you see though? Like, okay, that's the wrong finger, but like you can see how the insoles are a little bit rough. I still think though that they're gonna be okay. I think it's because someone tried to like glue um, these kinds of things onto the inside of the shoe. I'm not entirely sure, but these they wanted, let's see, I'll go ahead and just insert these insoles back in. Um, they wanted $5.99 for these, which I thought was super fair. And I think that this Mary Jane style is just so classic. So I was excited about those. I have sold shoes by that brand for a decent amount before as well. All right. We do have a few more pairs of shoes, but before we get into that, I will show you some clothes. These are just so silly but like how fun these are swimming trunks look at this print though i feel like this has to be 80s like look at how retro that print is um and like it's like that old paper tag this is water prints by rain spooner rain spooner is like a hawaiian brand and they usually do like you know, Hawaiian shirts and stuff like that. I've never seen trunks by them actually, but they're also very well known for their um, prints, which I think this print is so fun. The tag does say that this was made in Hawaii. It's 100% nylon and it's a size large. So this, I think, even though it's not super appropriate as far as seasonally, I think I am going to put this in my January drop because it is so fun. And even though it's an older piece, you know, it's definitely vintage. Um, I think that the length of these is very current. This is the length that a lot of men want right now for their swim trunks. So these are so, so, so fun. And I was very excited to find these for, how much did they want for these? 
Where is the tag? You know what? I think there wasn't a tag. I don't remember her even asking me like, hey, this doesn't have a tag. Are you okay with blank price? I think she just gave it a random price and we'll figure out what that price was. Cause yeah, I'm not seeing a tag on that anywhere. So fun. Okay. This was a new to me brand. Let me know down in the comments if you've ever heard of it. Comps looked pretty good. Um, it is Naketano. I've never heard of that. Um, it seems like it is Japanese. Brave new word. Made in Turkey. Um, they wanted $4.99 for it. And also, like, I don't know if this is a men's or a women's piece. I think, though, that it is a men's. It's a size small. And it's kind of hard to tell, but it's like this heathered print, if you can see that. And similar sweatshirts like this were going for like $40, $50, some even more on Poshmark. Obviously some a little bit less, but it did seem like the majority of them were going for a decent amount. I thought this was just a really cool piece and I always love trying out new brands. There is like a tiny, tiny bit of pilling, but I'll be able to take a sweater shaver to that. And actually even without the sweater shaver, it's really not that bad. So let me know if you have heard about that brand. Um, okay. <laughs> This is my favorite, favorite piece. And I looked up comps and comps were kind of whatever for this brand, but this sweater is fire. Okay, so you guys know I'm having like a vintage sweater moment, especially vintage sweaters for men. This is by the brand Woolsey, which I have never heard of. Um, it says like 42 over 52, that's probably the size. They wanted $4.99 for this. This is made, I believe, of 100% wool. No, 55 acrylic, 45% wool, made in the UK. Let me show you how good this sweater is though. We're gonna do like a slow reveal. Like, on a scale of 1 to 10, how good is that? This guy, this little Scottish guy, made me think so much of the Friends episode where Ross is like, I'm going to play bagpipes for your wedding, Chandler and Monica. <laughs> I, this sweater is everything. There is a little bit of that like 3D knit texture here where like these pop out a little bit at you. Um, I just, I love this. I love the guy. I just love everything about it. And then it continues, that pattern continues to the back. It's just so good. And then even like the blue at the bottom here, you can see how they um, kind of ribbed it a little bit. You guys, this sweater is just so good. My lighting situation is not good, but the sweater is so good. And, you know, I looked all over for like a hole or something like that, and I didn't see any. Oh, I'm just so excited about this sweater. And also it's pretty lightweight. It's not like a super heavy duty sweater. This is for sure going in my drop. I'm so ridiculously excited about it. And comps were like, I mean, I didn't see the same exact sweater, first of all, but sweaters by this brand on eBay were comping for like $20, $30. And I'm sorry, but I am going to price this up. I'm going to price it at at least $50 because it's so good. Like, oh my gosh. So that one, ridiculously excited about. All right, next up. I do not find this brand very often. Um, maybe I have found it one time before. The brand is Untuck It, um, which is a pretty good men's brand. I do think that its popularity has gone down a little bit since it, you know, enjoyed its craze. But it's in a size extra large, which I liked. And even though it's not like a button-up shirt, um, it's a really great Henley in like this red color. I thought it was a great classic piece by a brand that people do still really like. It was in really great condition. I think I should be able to price it around 35 so so, you know, we'll see how that does. It's a dependable brand, I would say. Um, I've just been having so much luck with Polo Jeans Co. or like Polo by Ralph Lauren.
I do think this is a little bit older of a piece. This is in a size extra large. It is made of 100% cotton. Um, this is the patch that they have on the pocket. It's not the pony the way that it typically is. Where did it go? It's in this great like forest green. They wanted $4.99 for it and it's new with tags. This is the reason why I think it's a little bit older of a piece. Look at this tag. First of all, I don't know this department store. The department store is Herber, Herbergers, Herbergers. Do you know Herbergers? Um, yeah, it just looks super old. So I don't know. I don't know if it's quite vintage, but it definitely looks to be a little bit older of a piece, but it is dead stock, you know, brand new with tags um, and an older piece. So that's super exciting. Probably list that for at least 35. So it was like the day of cabbie, I guess. So this jacket, first of all, they did kind of rip this tag apart. I don't know why they did that, but it still had the... Dun, 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 dun the care tag down here and I typed in the style number that I saw and what I found was that this jacket was selling for a decent amount of money. I don't remember exactly how much but it was enough that I was willing to pay the $12.99 that Goodwill was asking for this. This is what the jacket looks like. I thought it was really nice. I liked the big um, buttons that it had and I did really like the colors on this. I thought it was really great for the fall. Um, still contemplating if I want to put this in my drop or not. I probably won't. I'll probably just go ahead and list it rather than wait to, um, you know, put it in my drop. Plus it's not something that I'm like super excited about. It just was one of those things that it was, you know, sensible for me to pick it up given how much I would be able to profit from it. I also like that this big dramatic belt is still attached. A lot of times when you pick up belted items, whether they're jackets or robes or cardigans, they are missing their belts and that is super frustrating. Um, the other frustrating thing about this piece is that I will have to rely on measurements for the size since someone ripped that out but I don't think that's going to be a problem. I do believe I should be able to list this for maybe around $75 if not even more than that so very excited about that and I think jackets and things of that nature are still selling pretty decently. So we're going to end with some more shoes including one more pair of those Reeker? Riker? I don't know. And But it's probably my favorite um, pair of shoes by that brand that I picked up today. These are a pair of Skechers, which looking at them, I did not expect these to be Skechers at all. Yeah, I don't know. These just don't scream Skechers to me, but they are. I will prove it to you. Skechers. These are... They wanted $4.99 for, which is crazy because this Goodwill typically marks up Skechers so much. Um, these are the Relax Fit Cooled Memory Foam. I'm not seeing... Oh, okay. The size is a U.S. size 11. It is a leather upper, and they're really cute. They're very lightweight. Um, but yeah, just some great little boots. Probably list those for at least $40. These... Okay, let me show you the Riker. Riker? Let me show you these, these boots first. These I thought were really, really cute. These are gonna go in my January drop. I love the color on them. I love that like, would you call this teal? I think it's teal. I have such a hard time with like teal, turquoise, and there's another bluish shade that I'm always like, I don't know, I don't know what it is. But I love this color. It's like a very cool color against this gray. And then I love this like, kind of wavy scallop detail here. I don't know. I just thought that was really nice. And then I like how the laces um, contrast against the darker, cooler tones of the boot. I thought these were so nice. These are, they wanted $14.99 for, which was a little high, but I'm going to try to list these around like $75. I'm going to list them a little bit lower in my drop, um, but yeah, I think that these can do really, really well, actually. These are a European size 41, and again, I think Reeker, Riker. I think it is Reeker, but they are known for just um, great construction and comfort. They're known for, you know, making shoes that are very, very comfortable. And as you can see, were these even worn? I, they really look to be in perfect, perfect condition. So very excited about these. And then the complete opposite of those <laughs> to end this haul. These I still think are pretty cool, but these have been worn a lot and I probably didn't need to pick them up but I will explain why I did so I'm gonna just show you one of them because they're very very heavy these are Doc Martens they are let me see 
the they are the steel toe safety shoe they have slip resistance um and these are in a size what size are you these are in a uk size 8 us size 9 and these are great for people who just need work shoes and you know they need to protect their feet because maybe they're in construction what you'll notice is that the bottoms of the shoes are literally in perfect condition and again I think that's because of their construction because of their you know what they're going to be used for however it's the exteriors that are in quite rough shape you can see there's a lot of scratches a lot of nicks in the leather you can see a huge scuff back here and you can see like the leather coating that was on the back of this part of the shoe is like all gone um, the other shoe is not much better Again, lots of scratches and nicks and just parts of the shoe missing, if you will. Again, the leather um, has scraped off. It's come off on the back. However, they wanted $7.99 for these. And when I looked up comps, I saw the same exact shoe that was listed and sold for $43. And there were others of varying degrees of wear and tear that were going between that $40 to $50 mark. So as beat up as they are, I still think that they can do pretty well. Um, you know, the exteriors are kind of rough, but there is still so much life left in these. And, you know, the steel toe, which is the most important thing about steel toe work shoes, are still intact. And the bottoms, again, are amazing. Wow, these weigh like 18 pounds or something. They are so heavy. I cannot even believe it. But I will list these for at least $50 and I am happy to have saved something of such great quality and um, I'm excited that I'm able to pass on a really great pair of work shoes to someone else for a fraction of their retail price. I think that's going to be really cool, you know, just to get these to a new home. So that was my haul for today. Let me know if you guys have been sourcing really great things for your own reselling businesses. And let me know what you thought of this Thrift With Me format. If you enjoyed the voiceovers that I did while I was at the thrift store and just, you know, how I showed you the pieces in the wild. If you did enjoy that, I'll try to incorporate more of that in the future. I feel like I just don't do a lot of thrift with me's because I just feel like no one is going to care about what the process is as far as finding the items in the stores. So let me know what you think and let me know if you're excited about my monthly drops. I think that they're going to be really, really cool and I do hope that you guys enjoy them. So that is everything for today. Don't forget to hit that like button on your way out and thank you so much again for watching and for your support. It means a ton to me. Let's end 2022 with a bang and I will probably see you again in 2023. Maybe I'll have one more video out if I can like really get on my A game in this week. Maybe I'll have one more out before the year is out, but otherwise I'll see you next year. Bye!